Hi guys, <clears throat> I've got a quick video here to show you. This is the video the manufacturers don't want you to see. Now here we've got a Toshiba 32 inch tally fitted with the Vastel MB95 chassis. Uh, it's coming for repair. It was uh, one of the LEDs is out on one of the strips. Um, I have no backlighting, sound but no picture. Um, but I've replaced both of the strips because they're only about five or six pound each from Vestel and um, if you replace both strips at the same time you're less likely to have a comeback uh, you know at a future date and the customer says oh it's the same as it was before so just before I send the set back I'm going to read out the contents of the SPI um, now here we've got a board that's uh, Vestel MB95 um, that's the SPI chip there now most people what they'll do to read out the SPI is they get um, a programmer you get one of these clips like that the clip fastens on top of the SPI like that and you can read out the contents of the SPI but that's all well and good but the problem is you've got to desolder the SPI then when you've read it on the computer you've got to put it back in it's all very complicated very time consuming um, in this video I'm going to show you how we read out the contents of the SPI the M boot bin without even taking the back off the telly if you see that the back's still on the telly um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take a USB memory stick I'm going to download a program onto it so I'll put that into there and just make sure now as you can see I'm a professional electronics engineer not a professional photographer so my camera skills aren't that good and I've only just had this camera for Christmas so that's the memory stick I don't know if you can see that's actually blank so I'll click on that um, go to my documents I'm going to load on this program I don't know if you can see MB95 SPI reader which is there and send that to the USB memory stick uh, where has it gone send to there we go send to USB get rid of that just check it's on the USB before we start um, my computer USB yeah that's the reading SPI reading program on the stick so I'll get rid of that unplug that uh, we're going to plug this into the back of the TV Oh. well try again I'm trying to hold the camera at the same time as plugging this in it help if it was the right way around turn the tally around now the TV is now gone to media browser so it's registered that the sticks plugged in the back so what you do now is you turn the power off there at the mains and just turn that around I've got a little tripod as well for the camera but I'm trying to hold that in my hand take the remote control press the OK button on the remote you can see the the lights flashing press the OK button on the remote point it at the infrared sensor on the TV hold it down for 15 seconds and then let go and the TV should appear dead it should have no standby light lit at all so here we go holding down switch on 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 let go and when it's downloaded the SPI the TV should come back on if you keep an eye on the standby light it's com the set's completely dead there's no light on there you go the TV's come back on its own which means the entire contents of the SPI, um, two megs in this case, um, I've downloaded onto that stick now without even taking the back off the telly. See the back's still on, there's the USB. I'll just unplug that. Carry it over here to the computer. Plug it in. Yeah, that's registered the stick. 
and let me see if I can get a bit closer to the screen. If you look on the USB stick now, we've got the reader program, which is there, and we've got the entire contents, the mboot file, from the SPI of the board. So if we just open up the SPI with Hex Workshop, mboot to Meg, open with Hex Workshop, and there you go. That is the entire contents of the SPI. See all your hexadecimal data there. We can play about with that, we can reprogram it back into the tally. Um, but that's just... Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save that on my computer. So if this TV ever comes back in for repair again, um, if it needs a software download or anything, I can put the SPI back in without even removing the back on the telly. Uh, which is very useful. It's a trick that the manufacturers of the TVs don't want you to know. Um, so we've just downloaded the contents there of the all two megs of the SPI. Now it's also possible to download the main program from the NAND. Um, I just make a couple of software changes to the program and we can download the entire NAND contents. I'm not going to show you that now because it takes about 20 to 25 minutes to do that, which is a very time consuming program. So next time I get a little bit more time, I might show you how to do that. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe to my channel. I've got um, one or two more interesting videos. Um, let's take you over the side here. I've got a 1970s um, Thorn black and white TV. We're going to get that uh, fully restored and up and running. Perhaps um, make another video if we uh, move through here into another room. I'll show you another ongoing project. Another. Um, this is the spares room, by the way. Um, here's another ongoing project for another day. Um, May 1978 television magazine, which is what I used to write four years ago. Um, simple test card generator, only uses about 40 ICs. Um, and we're going to build that next, and that's um, you know another forthcoming YouTube video. And uh, there we go, guys. So thanks for watching. You can see the stores, plenty of parts in stock. Um, not really short of anything apart from space on the walls. That's the only thing I'm short of here. And uh, thanks for watching.